Solve for a is satisfying. a squared plus a over a plus 1 all squared equals 3. What shall we do? This fraction is very ugly. Since the left hand side is a sum of two square terms, two squares. So what we can do is to substitute. We can actually substitute x for a. Now this is actually in vain because they're both variables. But I still do that because then since the terms are going to look prettier, and y for this ugly fraction, a over a plus 1. We have x squared plus y squared equals 3, according to our original equation. However, if we want to solve for x and y, solve for the value of a, we need at least two equations about x and y. So... Now, we have to find another relationship between them. Look, if we subtract y from x, let's have a look. Mm. Now, look, if we subtract y from x, okay, x minus y is a minus a over a plus 1. And this one is a times a plus 1, then minus a, all over a plus 1. On the numerator, we have a squared plus a, then minus a. And this plus a minus a will cancel out each other. We will end up with a squared on the, denom on the numerator. So what we get on the numerator is just a times a, and we can write it as a times a over a plus 1. Now you can see. What is a? a is equal to x, and a over a plus 1 is y. So now we get that this one is just x times y. So do you see? x minus y equals x times y. How wonderful. So the second relationship between x and y so the second relationship between x and y is x minus y is equal to x, y. Very good. We can solve for x and y. However, it is not necessary to solve for x and y. It suffices to solve for x times y because x is a term of a, y as well. So x times y is just a squared over a plus 1. If we can solve for the value of a squared over a plus 1, namely x times y, then we can get a quadratic equation about a and solve for a. So firstly, let's focus on our first term, on our first equation. We get 3 equals x squared plus y squared. And this term, this sum of squares can be written as can be expressed by x minus y and x times y. It is x minus y all squared plus 2 times xy. Because x minus y is equal to xy, so it's just xy all squared plus 2 times xy. Now we actually get a quadratic equation about x times y. Because here we get xy squared plus 2 times xy equals 3, so x times y all squared plus 2 times xy minus 3 equals 0. And the left hand side can be factorized very easily. It is xy plus 3 times xy minus 1 is 0. So we get two solutions. The first one is x times y is 3 or x times y is 1. So in our first case, x times y equals negative 3. Because x times y is just a times a over a plus 1, which is, so in our first case, we have a squared over a plus 1 equals negative 3. So in this case, it is equivalent to a squared equals minus 3 times a, then minus 3. And we get a quadratic equation about a. a squared 
plus 3a plus 3 equals 0. However, if we check the discriminant, you can find out that the delta is 3 squared minus 4 times 3, which is negative 3, so it is less than, equal, less than 0. It is negative. So we don't have any solutions in this case. In our first case, we don't have any real solutions. If you're interested in uh, complex solutions, why not? You can solve for the complex solutions on your own. In our second case, we get a squared over a plus 1 equals 1. And this will lead to a very wonderful equation, a squared minus a minus 1 equals 0. It has two fantastic solutions. The first one is One plus square root of five, and the second one, one plus square root of five over two, and the second one is one minus square root of five over two. So the two solutions are one plus or minus square root of five over two, and these two solutions are the real solutions to our this equation. Did you get them? Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to me for more wonderful questions, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.